Hey, what do you want to talk about today? Tech stuff. Oh, okay. That sounds like a good idea. Hi, my name's Sharon. And I'm Barry. And welcome to the guest house. Hey. <laughs> so today, let's talk about the 10 simple tech updates or additions that we did to our RV. And we're talking simple, fairly inexpensive, but definitely, fairly. <laughs> definitely create utility because that's the idea. So I'm a tech guy. So the minute I knew we were getting an Airstream, I was thinking what I was going to do to make this thing high tech. That's very true. Because <laughs> that's what I do. So we found 10 things that we've done to our Airstream mm -hmm. so far this year. Yeah. Well, in 2020. Oh, yeah, yeah. 2020. So. Sorry. So what's number one? Number one on your list. Number one, to achieve any kind of uh, high-tech automation, if you will, you need connectivity. So we have Verizon wireless service. So we bought a jetpack from Verizon. Uh, the initial cost was $199 for the device, the hotspot. Uh, it's the 8800. It's the most common one that's used. And it added $20 a month to our service costs. Mm -hmm. And I believe the plan came with 15 gigabyte. You need that if you're going to do any kind of real high-tech stuff. You have to have connectivity. Yep. yep. So yep. that is number one most important. Number two. Number two on the list. For us, because we use Apple devices everywhere, the first thing we did was we bought the Apple TV device. Yep. Because what that does is that creates uh, a home kit environment. For any of you Apple people out there, home kit enthusiasts, you know that you have to have that. Mm -hmm. So that was number two, yep. and as a bonus, what that allowed was to create a smart TV environment where we could do Hulu, Netflix, Netflix HBO Go, all that stuff. All the stuff that we care to watch. That is, of course, if our jetpack is actually getting us service. <laughs> Anyway. Well, but so, we have another device that helps that jetpack get us right. service. That's later. Okay. So number three on your list. This is uh, this is in the order that Barry wanted to talk about them. So I wanted to put all the HomeKit enabled devices first. Sure. So they're all lumped together. Mm -hmm. uh, was a Fibaro door sensor. I want to say it was twenty dollars. And the reason I picked that one, and we're, we're going to show pictures of these devices too. Mm -hmm. The reason I picked it was because it's short and narrow. So it fits in between the door very nicely. Some of the door sensors are big and boxy looking. Mm -hmm. I didn't want that. So that's why I want this device. It's, you don't see it. You it's don't even know it's sleek. there. It's very sleek. You don't know that it's there. But we get notified if that door opens. Mm -hmm. So number four. Number four was an Onvis smart motion sensor. <laughs> it does motion detection. Everything. everything. <laughs> motion, temperature, humidity. Yeah. Humidity is important. Um, they're all very important. Well, consider all of you who have RVs and um, worry about humidity. Having a humidity sensor is a pretty good idea because then you don't have to guess. You know, and you don't have to wait until you see condensation on the walls or mold. And it's too late. Yeah, at that point, you're like, mm. so having a humidity sensor and trying to get ahead of it yeah. um, is very helpful. And actually with home automation, I can set... A threshold too if the humidity reaches a certain mm -hmm. level that my phone gives me a little ding and says hey humidity is high and then we know let's open up some windows whatever we got to do do whatever it is that we're gonna yeah. do yeah you know um, so number five is one of my personal favorites and it was probably the most expensive of these oh, 10 devices mm -hmm. yep. the WeBoost DriveX that mm -hmm. um, we did a video. We're going to put that here. Right, we did a or, video on it. Or here. Uh, or some. I think above Barry's head is where it's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, we did a video on the installation and testing of the WeBoost the first time we used it at a campground. And so we're going to stick a link to the video above us here. And you can take a look at that. And that'll be fun. We got a lot of good and bad feedback on it. Uh, mm -hmm. But just... The reality is with any of these boosters, and people just don't seem to get this, if there's no signal, it's not going to create a signal for you. No. 
If it's a signal and it might be weaker, it is going to boost it. That's exactly what it does. It absolutely will take an existing signal yeah. and it will make it better. It's just what it is. But that is very true. So, yeah, so yeah I think that, and, and here's the thing. We welcome um, positive and negative comments and reviews on anything that we talk about because it helps all of us, us and you guys who listen and watch, get smarter. Yeah. Right, because everybody's going to have a different experience. So, um, but I think one of the most common negatives um, that we kept seeing on Facebook and um, uh, was um, that if there's no signal, it doesn't do anything. Like, well, right. Duh. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I don't want to be rude about it, but that would—that's perfectly sensible criticism. Um, anyway, so number six, I really love number six, especially when we're not around and near the trailer. Yes. Um, there's always people asking about, what do you do about security? And, you know, the most common answers are, get a dog, get a gun. <laughs> well, we don't have either that we're going to carry in the RV with well, us. Well, we have a dog, but she's very tiny. Wouldn't do any good. I don't think anyone would be afraid of yeah. Sasha. So number six was the Blink outdoor cameras. That was an easy, easy, easy one to install. Mm -hmm. No. But I am a high-tech guy. Yep. So these Blink cameras let you know when there's something awry. Yeah. Well, it, it just basically gives you um, an idea of what kind of movement is going on around the trailer. And yeah. if it's an animal, cool. If it's a person getting that close to your trailer that they're in view of the camera, it's good to know. Right? Yeah. Because basically we set them up so that it's proximity. We don't set them up so that it looks out too far. We just want to see right within a couple of feet around the trailer. And um, then we know if somebody is coming close to the trailer, that's not us. Especially if, you know, we're inside the yeah. trailer or well, when we're not. And again, with all these devices we're talking about, because they're all smart devices, you can set schedules of when they will notify you when they won't. So they're not dinging. When you're at your fire pit for three hours and it's right. dinging every 30 seconds, right, right. you turn it off. So number seven, we've been talking about high tech, high tech, high tech. Number seven is not high tech, but it is necessary to enable number six, which the blink cameras. So number seven. The suction cups. The suction cups. The suction cups was a good solution because I kept wondering, how am I going to mount these cameras to the airstream mm -hmm. thought, well you could put them next to a tree and like mm, that's not always going to be so i found some suction cups uh they suction cup right onto the airstream they're awesome the only downside is it's not a downside is you got to remember to take them off before you leave yeah you should do that <laughs> we, we haven't had any issues because we generally remember <laughs> we have sort of this walk around that routine. we do everybody's got their routine we have ours and um so you know, we haven't really forgotten things like that, but no. I, I, I think you have to be aware of all the stuff that you have outside and whatever. Um, yeah. Other uh, comments that we got about it is, what if somebody just comes and takes the whole suction cup and camera off? Well, we put them high enough that you would need to have a step stool or a ladder to do that. So, well, and you would have to be okay looking for them. You'd have right. You'd have, you'd to, have, to, have to be, be looking, looking for them. them. I don't think you really notice them. If you didn't know they were there, no. you wouldn't notice them at all. So number eight. Is a pretty cool one, and yeah. we we really so you know this time of year is when especially up north where you may not be using your RV as much people start thinking about rodents and what do you do and you got to be vigilant and what if you're not in your trailer or RV every day looking around um, number seven was our solution of passive monitoring. Yes, and it works quite well. And it is. Um, it's it's a wise indoor camera. Mm -hmm. They're twenty dollars, super cheap. Mm -hmm. Again, you need connectivity, and that's why this jetpack is just a lifesaver. Mm -hmm. um, and I put it down at the floor level, and it just goes across the the floor of the airstream. Mm -hmm. And I really have it there in case we get a mouse in the airstream and we're it's not a there. Skitter. It's going to say, "Hey." Just saw some motion, mm -hmm. and it's going to let us know if we have mice problems. Hopefully, that will never happen. And um, along with that, you might want to consider deterrence. Um, I know that um, Cindy from Love Sub loves using peppermint oil. She says that is a lifesaver for her. And um, so she just puts it, I think, on cotton balls and just mm -hmm. kind of like puts a little little um, plastic containers with cotton balls of peppermint oil around because 
mice don't like strong smells and peppermint oil. Anyway, so number nine is um, we didn't, we kind of feel like Airstream should be putting these in the their trailers anyway. Um, and as soon as it was became available for the Airstreams, um, Barry bought it immediately. He like jumped on this. So what is number nine? So I love being uh, connected and I love being able to do things on my phone mm -hmm. and not have to walk somewhere. So the Easy Touch RV thermostat, mm -hmm. uh, I want to say it was $235. Mm -hmm. But what it does is it automates your thermostat in your RV. Mm -hmm. um, it allows you to change your thermostat, change the temperature, turn it on, turn off, mm -hmm. turn the heat pump on, all that stuff, and have real-time idea. Uh, as a side bonus, though, it now provides outdoor temperature. With the thermostat, the Dometic thermostat that comes in the Airstream, it doesn't give you the out outdoor temperature. Nope. But when I install this, I got outdoor temperature. Yep. Because there's already a sensor for yeah. the outdoor temperature. It's just that the, the thermostat that came with the Airstream didn't didn't read it and it was a, all of about five minutes to install it was uh, so i, I should but. mention though when you go out to their website it'll say put in your um it'll walk you through two or three steps and it'll say does your thermostat look like this this is the model like this when i did it ours was not listed mm -hmm. there was one that was close so i sent an email to their support people which were super awesome super quick the guy immediately responded back. I had sent a picture of our thermostat. He responded back. He said, yes, it will absolutely fit. Mm -hmm. um, so I bought it. Yep. And it has just been wonderful. So one of the things I do have to say, though, is this is not only good for when you're camping, but it's good for when you're home. Our RV is outside in our driveway. Mm -hmm. I have access to all this stuff in the house. There's been a couple nights when the temperature got down to 20 degrees, and if I know it's going to get that cold, I'll just kick on the propane heater mm -hmm. via the Easy Touch Turn thermostat. The Number 10 is one of those things that you don't really think about, but... Unless you're me. Is so... <laughs> yeah, because you think about stuff like that. I think most people don't think about stuff like this. You're kind of weird. Um, but number 10, uh, I did not... I didn't get... I was like, I'm not sure I understand why you want to do that. That doesn't make any sense. Um, but once we were out camping, you should tell them what you're talking it was about. Very dark. <laughs> it was very dark out, and you have to get up. At you know, Let's go to the bathroom or whatever. Yeah, it makes a big difference. So what is number ten? Well, it is. It, well, it's just a motion sensor light, mm -hmm. um, and it's the coolest thing I found. And because it looks like a long just about an 18-inch tube. And, and again, we'll show pictures. We're, I think we're going to show a video of it. And the location of it um, is perfect, and you'll see in the video why. It looks like it was made for the Airstream because yeah. it's got an aluminum case, and it's a tube, and it's very sleek looking. And you don't see it really it unless right you look at, down. at the door yeah. um, on the dinette, and you don't even notice it until it's nighttime and you walk past the kitchen towards the bathroom and the light turns on so <laughs> yeah so i will say the reason that we put it in the location that we did and we'll show you this mm -hmm. is because we tried other things um but when a, a light goes on it wakes people up yeah so this you'll see gives you that light but doesn't wake people up right it so don't it, go away yeah the way it's hidden behind the the dinette it yeah. kind of hides itself from the bed spaces yeah so anyway so that is our top 10 list of tech gadgets uh, that we added to our Airstream in 2020. Probably be some more. Can't wait until 2021 is over so we can go to the next 10. <laughs> I know. Maybe we'll do one, you know, in the middle of 2021. Anyway, yeah. if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. How about subscribing? That would be really awesome. <laughs> that would be really awesome. And hit the bell, because if you hit the bell, you get notified when we publish a that new video. so cool. And then you get to watch it right away. And that's pretty cool. That's awesome. It is. So, what do we say? Thanks for being our guest. Yeah, thanks, See guys. you, everyone. See you next time. <laughs>